Ice advance began 75,000 years ago and ended about 10,000, having reached into Wisconsin, by which name that ice sheet is now known. It was as though the Antarctic ice cap were to be dropped over country we know well. It produced profound changes in the landscape and disrupted life on the continent. What happens is that small ice caps thicken and grow under snow as the temperature drops. When snowfall exceeds snow melt, a huge ice sheet mushrooms over the land spreading south, covering all except the highest peaks. That grip will not be relinquished until the changing climate permits melting to take over. Today, the ice sheets have retreated to Greenland, but the mountain glaciers still flow. And in Alaska, in some of the ways they carry rocks and carve the landscape, they resemble that once continent-wide ice sheet. massive glacier creeps forward under the stress of its own enormous weight. In an ice sheet three miles thick, the stupendous pressure doesn't just liquefy the bottom ice, it rearranges the structure of the ice crystals so that they slide over one another like a spread deck of playing cards. The thicker the ice, the more effective it is as a natural plow. Rock debris is not only carried on top, but a rasping bulk is dragged heavily along at the glacier's base. These were the teeth of the age of ice. Their gargantuan bite can be seen today. Hundreds of miles from the nearest glacier, these most spectacular glacial grooves scour the limestone of Kelly's Island in Ohio. A simple cocktail of water, ice, and rock. But under colossal pressure, an ice sheet could with ease cut and carry 30 feet of rock from 2 million square miles of continent. Such conveyor belts of ice can still be seen, burdened with enormous boulders, or the finely pulverized debris gathered from the adjacent rock. There was once a fashion among geologists to regard such scattered rocks as the tide marks of the worldwide biblical flood. They called it drift, a name that is stuck to this day. Lines of drift carried on top and within the glacier are called moraines. On the Malaspina Glacier in Alaska, the moraines are spectacularly contorted by surges within the ice. It's natural abstract art that one day could be soil. These elephantine footprints are called kettle lakes, each formed where a block of ice left by a retreating glacier melted and the drift it carried sank to form a depression which later filled with water. In many parts of North America, they are instant evidence that ice passed this way. More evidence of the might of glaciers is to be found in these rocks. They've been carried on ice 400 miles from home. Known as the Akatox, one of them weighs 18,000 tons. Even by modern standards, an impressive task of removal. Once the eye can see in the graceful curves the place where the ice used to be, in the cirques and troughs and hanging valleys, then not only the beauty of shape and line is revealed, but the wonder of such construction is clear. jagged horn of rock resisted the ice that sliced away its sides, 
leaving it overlooking the Ice Age grandeur of Waterton Glacier International Peace Park on the border of the United States and Canada. When, as seen here from the air, a glacier ceases to advance, what is carried in the way of drift is offloaded as an end or terminal moraine. Over 10,000 years ago, when the Wisconsin ice sheet finally stalled, it made here the end moraines now known as Cape Cod, Nantucket Island, Martha's Vineyard, and to the west, the whale-like shape of Long Island. For a time, the end of the glacier hung here, its melting conveyor belt delivering Canadian rock, sand, and gravel to build these landmarks of the United States. So a Long Island beach is a rock garden that was carried for hundreds of miles and remains here as an epitaph to the last of the ice advances, at least until the next time. Even New York City's cemeteries are bedded in glacial remains. And the famous skyline itself is modified by the legacy left by the Ice Age. The hard rock island that is Manhattan was planed by the ice sheet into an undulating surface. Depressions filled with glacial drift and became marshy, so skyscrapers stand only north of Greenwich Village and where bedrock runs high again, to the south at the distant Wall Street end. There, some of the world's tallest buildings stand on the path of a glacier. The northward retreat of the ice from Manhattan opened a special chapter in human history. And the rest of this ice-ravaged landscape not only sprang up as the weight of ice disappeared, the crust is rising about eight inches a century toward its original level, but it now possessed what became a major pathway to the continent's interior. What we now call the Great Lakes were scoured by the ravages of the four glaciations. They were depressed weaknesses in this crust that the final flow of rivers filled to form the familiar maple leaf that is the largest expanse of fresh water in the world. It was in many ways to become the most significant of all the artifacts of the Ice Age. Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, Ontario. Five names with a ring of history and linked by a river to the sea 600 feet below and 2,500 miles away. What the Ice Age couldn't quite manage, the canal builders have completed. From the St. Lawrence Seaway, ships now sail in for 2,300 miles to the distant western shore of Lake Superior. The canal builders had to overcome a formidable obstacle course particularly to get down from Lake Erie to Lake Ontario, and from there to the sea. A high escarpment separated the lakes. It was another ancient sea reef. 